All right, in this video, I'm going to cover the latest features of my account dashboard products for Ninja Trader. Um, currently, this is what you see here is made up of two separate products duplicate account actions, which is the trade copier, and account risk manager, which is a tool for managing your risk and keeping track of important stats on evaluation accounts and funded accounts. So I'm gonna go through here the, the latest updates. You guys that have been using this, you'll notice that as I move my mouse, it's a lot more reactive as to what's happening. You can see here that when I hover over something that can be clicked, it now indicates that with a blue box. So if I'm selecting mini or micro, changing the multiplier, so on and so forth with the scroll wheel up and down, fade, it gives us feedback as to when we can click. So I'm gonna also go over, first of all, how the accounts get into this list. So when you apply this indicator to the chart window, the accounts are in this list if they have ever been connected at some point. So when you connect to the data feed, if there's if the accounts are considered to be connected, they're gonna be in the list. There are accounts that are gonna get discontinued. For example, like these red ones, I believe are accounts that I passed and they became PA accounts. So when that happens, Apex removes them and they're no longer relevant whatsoever. You can see that's the case here where there's no net liquidation on these. Um, right, so to get rid of these after this happens, you can just click the red X, or I'm sorry, the red dot, and they will never come back. Now this change allows you to be disconnected from a data feed and still set up the copier and still configure this window. So if you've watched some of my previous videos, you've seen the evolution of this, but to set a master account, you just double click on this dash and the master account is set in brown, it jumps to the top of the list. And you can set your follower accounts by just single clicking on the account name. So right now I'm set up, if I were to click the lock button, and then turn this on, I'm set up to copy trades from my number one PA account. So you can also delete more accounts, for instance, if I want to hide accounts. These accounts are connected, 18, 19, even though they've basically, yeah, they were blown accounts they're still connected because they haven't been removed or unsubscribed for in the Apex dashboard. So to hide those, you can just click this button, which will then get those out of the way so you don't have to see them. Again, if I reload Ninja Script, everything is as it was. So I can see my cash account here. Again, like let's say for instance, I would disconnect from my cash account. This is just gonna show you guys the red dot appears indicating that it's disconnected. So I could remove it or I can leave it there and it just has the dot indicating that it's not currently connected. This is pretty neat here, the one trade button. Actually, all right, so I wanna be clear about this. This is two products. Right down here, you can see copier and risk. If I turn off risk, I'm seeing only the copier functions, right? The master, the slave accounts. We can configure whether we're fading, we're multiplying, mini or micro. We can turn these on and off. In the same way, if I turn on only the risk, I can turn off the copier. Now, we don't have any master and slave accounts anymore. Now. It's literally just functioning as a risk manager. So 
there are clearly here, I'm trying to explain this, two separate products, copier and risk. If you have both, they work in conjunction with one another. And you can even turn both off and just use this as a way to track your positions. So I'll turn both of these back on and now we will cover the account risk manager product. So the risk manager, I'm going to cover this. This is built primarily for Apex at this point because most of my clients are familiar with and using Apex. And so I'm gonna cover from left to right. So here you can see these accounts are labeled as funded. They're funded um, because they've reached $53,000 in the account. This checkbox allows you to enable an account that it will automatically close the account when it hits the funded level. Now it's the funded level plus a dollar amount input, which I have set to 50. So the reason this one's still able to be checked is because we're not exactly or greater than $50 above that goal of $53,000. The rest of these, we can't even check this box because we've exceeded it by plus $50 above the funded amount. So this box is super cool. Again, these counts I'll hide because they've actually been blown, but it's neat because you can, like I said, exit automatically when you, when you hit that funded goal. Along with funded accounts is the one trade button, which I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. This button is built to submit a micro, one micro in and one micro out to automatically satisfy the trade requirements for the day. So this button's gonna appear if the account is, has zero trades for the day. So that's the quantity column right here. And it is, it has exceeded $53,000 even. So because those two requirements are met, all four of these accounts are showing this button tonight. And then down here we have actually a total button. So with really one click of a button, we can submit these trades to satisfy these funded accounts for the day. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. I'm gonna click this button. And you can see right there, it immediately submitted one micro long and one micro short for a dollar loss satisfying a requirement the buttons go away we're satisfying a requirement for today um, to hit that seven days to be funded moving on i want to talk about the auto liquidate and the from close columns because these are probably all one of the neatest parts of what i've built here these columns are keeping track of your auto liquidate peak threshold so the number here is not the peak, but it's gonna be the peak minus $2,500. And again, that trailing threshold is different for each account. So for those of you that are using different prop firms, like I said, reach out to me. I'm gonna be hard coding those values in as quickly as possible to serve you guys. So again, these auto liquidates may not be exactly correct because I loaded this after these accounts were blown. Okay, but what's going on here is that we can see, we would know auto liquidate are these values just because of the fact that these accounts are blown. I know they're blown, all right? But if I had applied this indicator before I was trading this, these would match perfectly. So you can see here, even in my PA accounts, the auto liquidate has been adjusted. Okay, it's adjusted to $2,500 behind the net liquidation. So I had some fairly bad trades today to start, but then was brought it back to where I was essentially break even on both of these accounts. So the auto liquidate is going to trail. It's going to store it in here. You're going to have up to date values. You're going to always know at a given time how many dollars you are from blowing an account. Again, for these accounts, I can actually just double click here just so you guys can see what it would actually look like. Double clicking on these is going to consider the account to be blown, which all of these are. 
Okay, some of these passed. You can see I had some that passed in here, but those are accounts that um, did not pass. So that being said, again, we keep moving through this, but this is the this column is huge as far as you guys being able to always see, and you can and you have two warning levels, two percentages where you can. It's going to be green if you're hundred percent down to sixty percent. And 30%, the color changes again. So you go from green to yellow to orange and then to red if the evaluation account is blown. And the same thing for the PAs, right? Until you get until you get your performance accounts up, this is gonna trail to 50,100. It's coded that way too, to save it in here. And then so you'll always know your how far you are from where the account would be closed if the value is hit. So that's risk management features specific to funded trading firms. Now I'm gonna show you guys the daily goal and loss. Now the daily goal and loss columns are built really for any accounts, right? We could use those on evaluation accounts as we're approaching the funded level. We could use those for PA accounts to protect our risk. So I'll just show you my plan on the PA account is to hit a daily goal of $1,600. So that's 80 NASDAQ points on one contract. My loss is $1,000. And so all I have to do is click on this cell. And then once I click, I can move the mouse up and down until I set the number to what I want. You can change the increment to 50, 20, whatever you want. It's by default $100. But after you click, you just scroll your mouse. So if you're copying accounts, you really, at this point, the way it works is when this, so this box is checked, means that it's on and ready to go. So as I'm trading, I know that at any point, when I get to a $1,600 goal or a $1,000 loss, it's gonna close out the account. Now when it does that, if it's a master account, that means it's gonna also close the slave accounts. So you really need to be careful and watch how you're configuring this. I implore you guys, like this is new, um, this is new for me and I've tested it. I feel really good about getting this in you guys' hands, but again, we really cannot have goals and losses for all of these at this point. If we have a goal for the master, when this gets taken out, it's going to take out the slave accounts or the follower accounts. Now, we could have smaller goals here because I've built this copier to know that if, if we close a position in a follower account, then when the master account's filled, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna reverse the position. But this is how I'd recommend using this, or if you're just using the risk manager and not the copier, you can set this on any account, right? So we can do each PA account separately. If we're gonna trade one and then move to the next, you can put all of these at whatever levels you want, and then basically hit the checkbox to turn them on or off. So I'm working on, going to be working on some more visual elements to show like how close you are to the goal, like as a progress bar and different things. But for now, I wanted to get this functionality done and in you guys' hands. So that's how the daily goal and loss works. I hope this is clear. Just click, scroll your mouse, get the check boxes on. You're good to go for the account. Um, a little sample configuration here. So... Let's take a look at some of the settings in here. Okay, so in here at the top, if you have purchased the account risk manager, you're gonna get these inputs right here. So these are where you can actually set these values if you're not able to set the values that you really want on the chart itself. So especially the auto liquidate peak balance, the first time you use this, it's important to expand this and go in and set the correct values for the peak balance. After you set these for the first time, then they will track perfectly going forward and save automatically. You should not have to adjust them again. 
Again, with the valuation accounts, you should never have to adjust them from the moment you start the account to the moment you pass or fail. It's gonna keep track of that peak threshold automatically right in here. Um, so you won't have to look at rhythmic. And again, like I said, that one column is a column that, that you don't have anywhere else. It's gonna show you exactly how many dollars you are away from where the account is blown or closed, however you wanna say it. Um, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, you can set these values in here. Same thing with daily goal and loss. You can see these are the only daily goals that we've set, so we can adjust them right here. Um, and the same thing with the daily loss. These are the only daily losses we set. They're stored right here. You can adjust them manually to whatever dollar amount you would want. Um, and I showed some of you guys this existing users. I talked about this in the last video, but this lock mode you can now turn off if you want to um, have a little bit more freedom to see other accounts, even though you get the copy you're on. Before, when I built this originally, and I'll show you guys this, when I built this originally, um, when you hit lock, it hides all the rest of the accounts and cleans up the screen. So you now, you now can turn that off, which is really cool. And I'm not gonna go through the rest of the settings because they're all pretty self-explanatory. They all have to do with basically removing columns, adding columns, turning features on and off, colors, things of that nature. So no need to cover that, but um, I just wanted to give a high level overview of what I'm offering in this video. So I'm really excited about this. I think it's gonna help a lot of you manage your risk, which I believe is the key to um, trading successfully, right? It's less about trade entries and more about risk management and just like minimizing your mistakes. And I know this one trade button just seems ludicrous, but I think it's the sickest thing. I mean, how many, I had one account where I accidentally submitted a mini instead of a micro and found myself down in a trade where I had the account passed and now it wasn't passed anymore. And so no more of that. Once the account's passed, I'm using the one trade button to get my trade in for the day Super simple, don't even have to think, you just click the button, it puts the trade in, in and out, and you're, you're satisfied the requirement for the day. So that pretty much covers, I think, most of what's in here. There's obviously a ton of features, a ton of things to understand. You can go back and watch some of the older videos to see the different copying functions and how that works. But yeah, I appreciate you guys watching this. And also, just check out my Enhanced Chart Trader products too if you're watching this video. If you haven't, there's a lot of stuff in here. I'll be coming out with some more videos on this too. But this Chart Trader I've designed to basically satisfy almost anything you can need to manage your entries and your exits, minimize your execution errors. So I would love for you guys to go check that out on my website. You can go to the products at the top of the website and then go to the professional chart trader tools page where it lists out all the options. The pro tools would be a purchase of everything that you see in here all at once, or you can buy like individual features like the bracket. Again, with the bracket, you can enter immediately or when the bar closes, you can toggle back and forth. You can enter on the bar close. This here is like a, a breakout entry price where you can enter best used with Renko bars where you trail a stop order until the reversal bar comes in, you get filled, buy and sell click, just standard being able to click, place your orders in the chart window. There's also not even listed on here as position sizing, change between ATM strategies, position sizing is turned off. So anyways, just a little plug there, but the main reason this video is the account dashboard, duplicate account actions and the account risk manager really just have, I've loved this project. Um, it's been fun building this for myself, my dad, and my friends, and just seeing um, all you guys and the encouraging things you guys have said about, about how great this is coming together. So we're gonna keep it going. Send me your feedback, let me know what you think, and I would appreciate it if you would use my coupon on Apex. You might notice, first time clicking this window, it launches the Apex website. So. Yeah, your, the affiliate commissions help me continue to build this out, fund this project, so I'm grateful for that as well. And I'm trading right alongside you guys, so stay tuned for more on my trading performance as well. Thanks for listening. Next video coming soon. All right.